usually see women in Islamic lands as covered from head to toe, and we think that they have no rights or they are submissive, and they are always in the corner of their house, and uh, nobody talks to them. They don't take any stand in their own personal life or their society. This is so far from the truth. What we hear is only um, what we hear through the media. Usually the speaker has some kind of intention to express his or her own ideology. And sometimes those ideologies are not 100% accurate. What remains for the audience is that audience has to become informed. Because otherwise, if we do not have enough information, we take anything that comes along. When it comes to the rights of women, we can always go back to the beginning of Islam, to 7th century. Women should have the right to vote. Women should lead um, armies. Women should be educators. Women are the head of um, an organization. I think that those things happened only around the late 19th or 20th century. But this is also so far from the truth. Because uh, when we go back to the life of the Prophet of Islam, when it was time to choose a leader, he asked everybody to come and vote, men and women, for whomever they think is more appropriate to lead, uh, to lead the political system during that time, men and women. We hear about um, the rights of women to, to education because according to his teachings, he says, he says that the pursuit of knowledge is the responsibility of every human being, men and women. So in this case, not only I'm responsible to educate myself, I cannot prevent other people from educating themselves too. So whatever we see sometimes in political systems, we have to make sure that we separate religion from political systems. It is a part of human nature that we would like to hide behind ideologies rather than taking responsibility ourselves. So my father says such and such, so I will do it. So it means in this case, every blame or every success goes back to my father and I have absolutely no responsibility. There are a few important um, subject matter that comes along our way that we hear about it often and often. One is the story of hijab, meaning covering. The other one is the story of um, having four wives that most of the time that comes along our way and people ask, so what about these questions? So we have to go back to that time and see why are these, um, um, these traditions. First of all, remember that Islam comes from Saudi Arabia. And Saudi Arabia is a very hot desert land. So it means whether it is religion or not, people do have to cover themselves from head to toe to prevent themselves from the sand storm, the storm to prevent themselves from heat. So just imagine if you are in desert, then you, have, you really have to protect yourself from head to toe. Now, when Islam came to other lands through the Arab nation, People also confuse the dressing as a part of the religion. We want to follow the same tradition of the Arabs. Then there are verses in Quran that talks about um, being modest. Women have to be modest, prevent their body from being veiled to, to the society. So women have to be modest. Men also have to be modest. It relates to all human beings. And remember at the time of the Prophet, there have been lots of wars and many of the men were killed and remain many women. So 7th century, what are the job offerings for women? Think about that. What are the job offerings for women? So he says, you cannot take women and make a, a, a dishonest living from them. No, if you want these women, you have to marry them. You cannot just take them. And we have to go back to the society that would, they would bury their daughters because they were ashamed of having a, a female in their family. So we are talking about a very primitive culture. So he makes it mandatory, but he also makes it very conditional. Four wives doesn't mean that you can go out there and just marry this person and this person and that person and the other person. He says you have to treat them equally. Now just think about that. If one of them has one house, the other one should have another house, the other one has another house, the other one is another house. Just say that you are so wealthy that you can offer four houses equal to each one of these wives. What about emotion? Can you actually give them equal emotion, equal affection? That is not a part of the human system. So he actually makes it mandatory, conditional. 
But ultimately he says, well, always the same with one wife. We are talking about a, 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 not only that nation, there were many nations that polygamy was a part of the practice. Many of the uh, prophets in Hebrew um, uh, tradition, they, were, uh, they had, I don't know, four or five or, or many, many wives. Now, as time passes, the condition, the condition of life changes. So still there are some countries, some Islamic countries, they, they say, well, four wives is, is permissible. It is permissible according to the condition. The condition is that you have to treat them equally. And that is not beyond, that is not within the human domain. You can be wealthy and give everything to them, but then emotion is another subject matter that you have to think about. When we go back to his own personal life, he only had children with his first wife, that was Khadija, and he stayed with him for a long, long time uh, until the time that she died. When she died, she went through a period of uh, seclusion. He went through a period of seclusion, and then he married. He married, um, when we look to, his, um, to the, the stories of his wives, there have been either the daughters of um, powerful men, or they were very old, meaning that they had nobody else to take care of them. We have we come across um, wives that who were like 85 years old. It doesn't mean that it is, it means that if you hold this person, if you want to give residence to this person, it has to be legal. It has to be lawful. You cannot take advantage of them. So it is, it is not a matter of a slavery, or you cannot put them into to prostitution. That is, not, that is against human rights. So if you want to take them, to protect them, you have to marry them. Almost in all the universities in Islamic lands, about 65% of the graduate students are women. So it means there is education. At the present time, probably the population of the world is about 5 billion. 1.7 billion are Muslims. So you are talking about a huge percentage. So you think that all these 1.7 billion Muslim men and women look alike? They go under the same uh, kind of tradition, same kind of political system, same kind of belief system, same kind of everything? No. This is such a huge generalization of things, and that is something that we may need to avoid. One of the things when we talk about Muslim women, one of the important roles that we keep on forgetting is the role of Sufi women, meaning that the mystics of Islam, the Muslim women mystics, and they have been active and they used to have gatherings, teach students, men and women, write books, they would travel, some of them married, some of them choose uh, not to get married from the very beginning of time, all the way from the 7th century. And they have been active in every nation, in every culture, from the beginning of the Islam, because Sufism comes to the, is the heart of Islam, is the mysticism of Islam, and it was born out of Islamic tradition. So they have been active since the very beginning and is still continuing to be active. So this is something that we can keep on forgetting. And what, how these women have been so active is that going back to the, to the principle of Islam, because the most important principle in Islam is that there is one divine unity, and there is nothing other than that. Everything is a part of that divine unity. If everything is a part of that divine unity, they mean everything is divine, regardless. Regardless of all human limitations, everything is the divine. And according to the teaching of the Prophet of Islam, since he said that the pursuit of knowledge is your responsibility, knowledge had played such an important role in the Islamic tradition. And knowledge is not only reading books and become familiar with, with ideologies, Knowledge is actually becoming what you are searching for. And, the, and knowledge and love became two partners in the pursuit of the reality, the pursuit of the truth in Islamic tradition.